he's ascended over to, over the last. I mean, he's he plays at a high level. He's he's very productive, uh, and they win. Now, a lot of that, I think, is is a function too of he's he's the perfect quarterback for for what they do, what they do, and they've it's to me it goes both ways. They've also built it uh, built it around him. Uh, you know, was, w would you put him up there with with the guys that can transcend their supporting cast? You know, the the, the Brady's. Uh, whether it's you know, Aaron Rodgers, Breeze, yeah. Roethlisberger, the, the the ones that you would consider the two, three, four elite guys, but no, he he certainly played himself into that next tier. Tell us how you really feel. That was Browns coach Mike Pettin saying Russell Wilson is not quite top tier. The Browns travel to Seattle on Sunday to play the Seahawks who have been carried by Wilson over the last month. In those four games, Wilson has a QBR of 95 with 16 TDs and no receptions. When asked to respond to Penton, Wilson said, I don't worry about that. I think it comes down to winning games. That's the only thing I care about. Skip, mm. do you have a problem with Mike Penton saying this? I definitely have a problem with what he said this time because Stephen A., as you know, I often have a problem with things that Mike Penton says. To me... Mike Patton always, well, he always strikes me. This is just me, my view. He strikes me as a guy who's constantly trying to convince the media that he really knows what he's doing, that he really gets football and sees it from the inside out, that he's really smarter than you give him credit for. And this was just so dumb. I'm, I, it, it's not completely inaccurate what he just said. I mean, not that, you know, we all agree Russell Wilson hasn't proven to be Tom Brady or Peyton Manning or Drew Brees or Aaron Rodgers. We get that. But wrong place, wrong time, Mike Patton. You are now taking your, what are they, 3 and 10 Cleveland Browns, 3 and 10 Cleveland Browns to Seattle, where your kid quarterback, Johnny Manziel, is going to have to face the Legion of Boom and, and go basically head to head with Russell Wilson, who, as Molly just pointed out, has been the hottest quarterback in pro football, not just for a game or two, for a month, for four straight games, 16 touchdowns to zero interceptions. And I, I dare say that Russell Wilson has played in the elite level at least for the last month. And I point out that all of a sudden, because now the Las Vegas power rankings say the best team in pro football, or you could, you could equate it to the most dangerous team, is Seattle. So it's very possible that Russell Wilson will play in his third straight Super Bowl. So that's sort of an elite kind of accomplishment to me. You can, you can argue that he has the defense, he's had beast mode, blah, blah, blah. But lately, Russell Wilson has carried this football team. It is the wrong place and the wrong time to suggest sort of it, giving him a backdoor compliment that, well, he, he's played his way into the, the second level. Don't, don't say it now, Mike. Don't impress us with your, your football insight. Now, it's, it's not fair to your kid quarterback as he gets thrown into the fire against Russell Wilson and boom, and, and all the, and the 12th man up in Seattle. I, I just, he, he drives me a little crazy, Stephen A., because he's now 10 and 19 as a head coach, and I'm just going to guess he will not be the head coach next year in Cleveland. Well, I wouldn't say he drives me crazy because, you know, fact of the matter is he's asked some of these questions. He's given you an honest answer. I don't have a problem with it per se. What I would say is that, you know, he may come across as a bit accurate, but I think that it's for those of us who are not paying attention. When we look at the Russell Wilson that we've been watching, yes, we see the 145.9 uh, quarter uh, passer rating over the last four games, the 16 touchdowns, the zero interceptions. We get all of that. Skip, I'm going to go a, a step deeper. Russell Wilson is in his fourth NFL season. He has never had a record worse than 11 and five, which was his first year. 113 and 12 the, the, the following two years, respectively. He could probably go 11 and 5, assuming they run the table for the rest of this regular season. This guy's got 98 touchdowns. He's got just 33 interceptions. He has never thrown more than 10 interceptions in any season in his young NFL career. His QBR has been over 70 three of his four seasons in the National Football League. And oh, by the way, he's been to two Super Bowls and he already has a, two, a Super Bowl championship on his resume. 
maybe, just maybe, we need to be talking about Russell Wilson Agreed. on a very elite level. Maybe we need to give him the respect mm -hmm. that he deserves and he has earned. And here's why. He's not somebody, Skip. Third round pick, obviously, you know, being at North Carolina State, then Wisconsin, we know his story. But the biggest thing about him, Skip, is that this, this, this guy, you don't marvel at his ability just because of his elusivity on the field and his level of production. Let's give the guy credit where it's due. How about his commitment? How about the fact that you had people questioning his authenticity, not just as a basketball player, but as a man? Why don't you get into that? Why don't we get into the fact that this guy has had to overcome odds each and every step of the way from being a collegiate to being a professional football player? He wasn't tough enough. He wasn't real enough. He didn't vibe with the players. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. And all he's done is dedicate himself in the most elite football league in this nation, and he has produced on the very highest level imaginable. We need to give this kid his respect where it's due. To get to Patton, where it really resonates, was the last point you brought up. And I was waiting to see if you were going to bring it up. Because, Skip Bayless, did it ever occur to you that Mike Patton might have said this just to make life difficult for Johnny Manziel? Maybe. <laughs> it's I mean, that I, 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 I mean, I'm not sure he's he that smart, but maybe. Well, 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 well listen, let's not, you might disagree with Mike Patton. But let's not question the man's intelligence. He's obviously an intelligent individual. I don't know. He just, you, just dis, you just disagree with him. I just don't him. think he's a very good head coach. Maybe well, a coordinator, well, he's not, not a well, head coach. Well, maybe he's not a good head coach because of his, abilities of, to, his ability to motivate and galvanize his troops. That doesn't speak to his intellect. That speaks to a desire or lack thereof to play for this man. But I certainly see no reason to question his, his intelligence. I'm saying to you that we've looked at a bevy of things he has done and we've questioned whether or not he even likes this kid and wants him on the squad you according to your sources heard he didn't even want Johnny that Menzel is correct. and he's never liked Johnny Menzel so considering that and then suspending him or the usage of Johnny Menzel prior to him warranting that you know that that benching rather not the suspension but the benching yeah. all right did it occur to you <laughs> that he might have said all of this just to make life difficult for Johnny Manziel. I think it is plausible that that is a possibility that okay. that might have been his intent. So okay. I don't know. And speaking of Johnny, one other <clears throat> direction. This is a little other insight that Petten bestowed on us yesterday was he's yeah. comparing Russell Wilson to Johnny Manziel as runners. And he gave Russell the edge as a runner because the package is built more around him, and, and I'm paraphrasing the quote slightly, but he said Russell is thicker and, and, a, and more capable of withstanding the punishment that comes with running, called running plays. Johnny's listed at 207 pounds, Russell at 203 pounds. Now, Russell might be about an inch shorter than Johnny, so, and you've talked about how big his legs are, his thighs, he's got a good base to him. So does Johnny. I saw Johnny run like crazy in college and get up and run some more. My point to you is, Petten said, we, we've got some zone read stuff we have and some rollout stuff. They don't call it. They just keep Johnny in the pocket. Any time that Johnny runs, it's extemporaneously. And we all know he can be pretty great at that when he keeps it within bounds and within the confines of the offense. But my point is, I, I don't, they, they sabotage Johnny because they don't run zone reads. They don't roll him out. They don't let him run where he could run for six or eight yards and slide the way Russell is so efficient at just getting down after he has gashed you for eight yards. So I, I don't get well, this either. Well, listen, when I look at the Seattle Seahawks, Skip Bayless, I see an intellectual at the quarterback position in Russell Wilson who seems to know when to stay in the pocket, where to stay in the pocket, he, how long to stay in there. And most decisions he makes are smart ones. Whereas Johnny Menzel's default position is to run. And when you say run extemporaneously, let's understand what that means. That means running without necessarily thinking all the time. It's just instinctual, and that's what you feel the need to do, as opposed to somebody like Russell Wilson who recognizes what the NFL aficionados have told him. No running quarterback is truly successful in the National Football League when their default position 
is okay. to run. You've got to be willing and able to stand in that pocket and let the ball fling. What Johnny Manziel has to learn are things Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson seems to have known from the time he came into this league, which is why even though he was a third-round pick and they had signed Matt Flynn to an exorbitant deal guaranteeing him $12 million, Russell Wilson was still able to beat him out because he was head and shoulders above and better than Matt Flynn, even though the Seattle Seahawks had prematurely invested that money in a quarterback that they had no business okay. giving that money to. Point of order. I do disagree on, on your premise there. Remember, Russell has started 69 NFL games. Johnny has started six. So just on, let's, let's keep this in perspective here. Yeah. The first 30 or so starts for Russell Wilson, I saw a lot of Johnny Manziel in him. I saw a lot more extemporaneous bolting from the pocket. He had to learn to win from the pocket. And what's been so beautiful to watch in these last four games, he's mostly beating teams from the pocket, which is why it gives me some hope that Johnny could figure out he can beat you from the pocket. He beat a lot of teams from the pocket at Texas A&M, where I point out one more time, his last year at A&M, he had the best passing percentage from the pocket in college football his last year at A&M. So, well, in, fair, in fairness to you, you certainly watched more of Johnny Manziel than I did in college, and you certainly watched more than Russell Wilson his rookie year in Seattle than I did. I watched them both, obviously, but not nearly as much as you have. What I can tell you is that when you listen to the folks talking NFL football, one of the things that resonated with me was the fact that all of them raved, including Coach Pete Carroll. They would repeatedly rave about how Russell Wilson could stand in the pocket, how adroit he was at, at, at being selective in when to run and when to stand in the pocket and throw the football. And they were saying this from his rookie campaign. That's why I bring that up. Because when we watched him progress before they lost in the playoffs to Atlanta, if I remember correctly, you know, when he, when he had them roaring back from a huge deficit, uh, the bottom line is we looked at Russell Wilson and we saw a guy that was more judicious in when he elected to run and when he elected to pass, where he seemed to have been ahead of the curve than most quarterbacks, including Johnny Menzel. Okay. You're challenging that. And I'll, and I'll lean on that, but I'm telling you, all I heard is rookie year. I saw him quite a few times, but again, not every down like you did. All I heard was how judicious he was in doing so. So that's where I'm leaning on. Without naming them, I know a couple of analysts who work at this network who, who did not think that Russell Wilson could ever win from the pocket, and he is winning mm -hmm. from the pocket. That's true. And it That's gives right. me hope That's for right. Manziel. Right. Maybe yeah. he could figure that okay. out. And you have to give him credit. Okay. For but certainly poor right. timing for those comments. Maybe not entirely uh, inaccurate, but definitely unnecessary. And potentially hurts his team. I think adding fuel <laughs> to the fire there, getting them fired up. And just for perspective, over the past two seasons, Wilson's QBR 71.5, Brady 70.1. Only Brady and Rodgers have more wins than Wilson over those two years.